502 and low call 502. 502. Huh? 502. 502. <laughs> Well, you know, well, I'm running late. <laughs> <laughs> but our tablets do say 602. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Mr. Pintex here, Clint's here, so Mr. Casino, and I'm here, so we have a board. Mr. Pintex. I heard. Yeah. Well, I know, all know. to the yeah. public. Oh, let's do the, <laughs> the uh, approval of the minutes. Anybody read the minutes? Yes. <laughs> Why have you had? Okay. okay. Well, and we the, need the we, May one, mm -hmm. May third meeting on the first election of chairman and vice chairman. Mm -hmm. That's first two sentences are says Paul Brink volunteered to be the chair. Vote three to zero approved. Member Paul Brink, uh, uh, and then. Uh, First one says member Paul Brick second the motion, but John Pintech actually sent it. Okay. So you can scratch that. Okay. Quick. And that was for the election of the chair. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any motion except the May May minutes? Motion to accept the May minutes as yes. With the correction. Do I hear a second? Second. Not right. Motion approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now the June uh, 28th meeting. Uh, we fixed the approval of the previous minutes. So, do I hear a motion to approve those? Motion to approve minutes. June 28th. Uh, June 28th, 2023. All right. So here's second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, do I have to sign those or is that done? Uh, we'll question? do it after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Now, call to the public. Any public wants to speak here? <laughs> Nobody else. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we have anybody online. Is, anybody on? Is there anybody online? Nope. Okay, seeing no public, we'll proceed. Are we ready to start the public hearing? We are. Start the public hearing. Okay, and yeah. I will give the presentation, but let me get our applicants on the phone okay. before it be that. Let me just read this. Variation 2306, Navajo setback. Applicant initiated variance request to section 904.03, setbacks, principal and accessory. Structures, uses of the zoning regulations. The call cannot be completed as dialed. Oops. Hi, is this Sherry? This is Terry. Oh, hi, Terry. Excuse me. This is Christine McLaughlin with Cochise County Planning, and I'm here with the Board of Adjustments, and we're ready to get started with your public hearing. Uh, are you prepared? Okay, and can you hear us? Yes. Okay, I'll turn this up. And can you guys hear, hear the applicant? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll try to visualize that. Okay. Okay. Hopefully it's cooler there than yeah. here. Not much. 
Well, good evening. This is, and, and, and just for your benefit, I'm taking them through the PowerPoint presentation that was posted online um, with the agenda. So good evening. This is Variant Stock at 2306. Our applicant is Mr. Alan Davis. The subject property is located at 3513 East Navajo, Sierra Vista, Arizona, APN 10599101. We're indicated on this slide. This is in District 1. The applicant requests to encroach 10 feet into the western setback of his property line. The property is located at SR 43, which is single household residential, one dwelling per acre. By zoning, all accessory structures must be no less than 20 feet from all property boundaries. The applicant requests a variance to construct a 550 square foot accessory building 10 feet from the western property line. Here is the concept plan that was submitted with the application. As you can see, the applicant proposes adding an accessory building which would serve as a garage in the front of the house near uh, their front door and their paved loop driveway. The house was constructed in 1987 uh, and the applicant purchased the property in 2022. There are eight factors we use to evaluate variance proposals, which are listed on this slide. It complies with six. Specifically, the applicant has placed a shorter side of the proposed accessory structure running east-west um, near to the home. The applicant, uh, applications for a detached accessory structure, more specifically a 550 square foot accessory structure, use is permitted within SR43 zoning district. The proposed use does not violate the intent or purpose of the residential zoning district. Regarding self-creation, this factor considers what, whether the unnecessary hardship does not arise from a condition created by the action of the owner of the property. The applicant and current property owner purchased the property in uh, 2022. This neighborhood was originally developed in the 1980s. The house was constructed in 1987 since that time, but prior to this application, an asphalt looped driveway, fence, and landscape were installed, which made connections to the backyard placement of the proposed accessory structure a challenge. The use is and will remain single-family residential. Also, it's not a violation of state or federal law. The request is for a 10-foot reduction in the required setback to the property line. The applicant states it's an accommodation is needed for health and mobility reasons. Section 504 of the American with Disabilities Act mandates a reasonable accommodation requirement. More specifically, Titles 2 and 3 of the ADA require public entities and public accommodations to make reasonable modifications to policies, practices, or procedures to avoid discrimination. In terms of adverse impacts, the property is within a medium density neighborhood. Overall, the property is in excellent condition. If permitted by the Board of Adjustment, the accessory structure must be incidental to the accessory to the existing house, meaning it must be lesser in overall size and height than the house. The proposed uh, building is 550 square feet. It may not exceed the height of the existing 2,115 square foot home. Potentially, the most impacted property is directly to the west. As shown in the photos, um, As shown in the photos, the, uh, that property is surrounded by a six-foot-tall masonry block wall. Since the report was sent, sent to the board, um, originally when I sent this, uh, there was one uh, letter attached. I got an additional two comment letters, which were not included in the report's analysis. Uh, however, these uh, letters were from the neighbors on both sides immediately Jason. I attached the responses to this item in the agenda um, and I did want to state for the record both neighbors as well as one neighbor to the rear were concerned about the look of the new structure and the impact it could have on their property values mostly due to aesthetics. You do what? Aesthetics, how okay. it looks um, and blends in with the overall neighborhood. This is a very nice neighborhood. Um, I can go back to that slide. Very established. Um, I do not believe this is a hardship created by zoning. SR43 zone property must be a minimum of 43,505 square feet. 
The lot is legally conforming in terms of minimum lot size. An undeveloped lot within the zoning designation could accommodate both the home and the proposed accessory structure while observing all required setbacks. And we'll go back to the public input. Staff mail notices to neighbor, neighboring property owners within 300 feet on July 3rd, 2023. Staff posted the property on July 7th, 2023, and a published legal notice in the Sierra Vista Herald uh, was placed on June 5th, 2023. And like I just mentioned, I've received three letters in opposition, which were attached to the report. Again, here are the site photos. This is the suburban residential neighborhood. The photos on the left are focused on the western edge of the property uh, where the garage is proposed. And the photo to the right is a drone photo, which shows the entire lot. In terms of factors in favor of the request, the request is consistent with six of the eight criteria used by staff to help determine the suitability of a given variance request. The applicant has health and mobility issues. And Section 504 of the Americans with Disability Act, which is federal law, mandates reasonable accommodation to avoid discrimination. In terms of factors against approving the request, the variance is not fully consistent with two of the eight criteria used by staff to help determine suitability of a given variance request. And the case planner received three letters of opposition from neighbors within 300 feet. And with that, I'll pause for discussion and the applicant is on the phone. Um, so before I, I turn to our applicant, do you guys have any questions for me or would you like to just go to the applicant discussion? On the <laughs> left side there, it says 10 foot. Mm -hmm. That's the distance between the house and the property line? That would be, so the yellow square is indicating where they propose to put right. the new structure. So that would be from the nearest edge of that structure to the property line. It's going to be a garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know in the past, we've, when we looked at a lot of these, we've had um, other, other areas where maybe a variance has been approved. And, and I, I I mean, I'm familiar with this neighborhood here, and you're right, it's very established, very nice neighborhood. Is there other examples of of accessory buildings being put within within that 20-foot setback? Because those homes are pretty spread out. They are. Um, I think what we're going to find is fewer examples of that. It's, um, I think, with the last two. We saw, I mean, there were, there were a lot of examples, but given the minimum lot size here is, is an acre, I, I think there's, there's possibly fewer, but there still could be some. There weren't as many that I could like immediately spot, like driving around. Okay. What's the uh, purpose of that additional structure there is because they have a garage. No, no, we actually don't have the garage. We have, we have a carport on, yeah. the, on, the, oh, on the other side of the house. That white room? That white that one. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a room. That is not a garage. That That's a carport, correct? Yeah. Yeah, the metal piece is a carport. That's the, we have the white room? Yeah. Oh, yes, it does have a white roof, excuse me. I thought you said white roof. <laughs> what, what is the purpose of the structure that you wish to build on the left side of the house? Well, the kitchen is over there, and the living room, everything is over there. And when I, I have to carry groceries and stuff all the way across the house. You just had back surgery two years ago. I've had two back surgeries. I, I fell off a ladder five years ago. Yeah, we're, oh, we're, we're, we're pretty beat yeah. up. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, it's just that it's a real inconvenience and it's hard to have to pack everything through the house. So what you're saying is this, this new structure is your, going to be your garage? Yeah. Yes. Yeah.
Because you have a lot of room in the back, but that would be There's not good for parking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same thing on the street. The house. Yeah. They, they needed, when they built the house, it probably should have been over over another 20 feet the other direction, yeah. and it would have been perfect. But, yeah. I would have been crooked with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I should probably have looked at that before I bought Is there it. any possibility of moving that forward the into book. the horse to, to the center? Because it looks like they have a lot of room to come out towards the, where, where their driveway, maybe? I think they're still going to need to encroach, because the minimum required setbacks 20 feet. And that dimensions, I think, 22 feet. And even if they were to pull it forward, um, yeah, even if we pulled it forward, they couldn't. We just it would be in front. Of, the garage would be in front of the house, <laughs> and we're trying. Yeah, we thought about that, but with the dining room is right there, and it's kind of it's, the way it's built is just. We need an addition. The garage needed to be over by the kitchen. I don't know why it wasn't. You know? Well, you so, didn't build that. Yeah. yeah. No, we didn't. We didn't know, <laughs> yeah, we didn't understand it either. Because I'm telling you, I have to trace through all the way through that house in that carport. And, and, and also, they, 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 they can't put it in front of the house either. It's got to be. Even or behind that true? It's got to be next to that side. Well, they meet the minimum setback, and we don't require that accessory buildings actually be behind. No, um, they can't be in front of them. Well, this is their experience. Yeah, but their neighbor, look at the garage there. It sticks out in front of the house. Yeah. No, well, it's part of the the, the the neighbor with that wall. And trees, they have trees all along that wall, also yeah, on, they on the neighbor's side. They, wouldn't they don't see it. They don't okay. see it. They, they, and the, your, the front door to the house, that's where the circle driveway goes up to the front door. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And there's also a, a door on the side of the house on that side. There's, okay. Yeah, there is a door on uh, the left side that that I can go into through the garage. I can go out the back of it into the house from there into the kitchen. I don't so, know how to explain so it. Either, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's access from the front door over the... Yeah. But it's just too far. Let's... let's way, yeah. Excuse me. Let's open the public hearing right now, and you will have 10 minutes to give... Uh, tell us about it. Um, and then any rebuttal or people in favor will have five minutes, and then afterwards you will have another five minutes. So if you'd like to go ahead and explain the the uh, uh, the reason for the application, uh, we can move along here, and then we can ask questions later. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to be eighty <laughs> yeah. in, in November. And I got <laughs> so yeah, we are getting up there. And so basically, it could be more than anything yeah. else for us yeah. to be able to get in and out for groceries and whatever. Um, and, you know, it's either that or we we'll put the house up for sale. Or you know, it's kind of we're gonna yeah, we just live there. We really like the area, the neighborhood, and everything. And it's just that we didn't realize that it was going to take. I, I have to go through the back door, excuse me, the side door on the side of, I have to go through a gate, then through a back door and the side of the house and then walk all the way through that area, all the way through the house to get to the kitchen. And that gets old. <laughs> oh, so, oh. yeah, but, you know, it, it's kind of difficult for me. And having two back surgeries, it's, it's not a lot of fun to carry stuff all the way through there. If the house is big, just big enough to be um, difficult to do. Let me ask you, are you going to uh, have a door into the house, or are you going to have to come out of that the, the addition you're proposing and then into another door into the house, or are you going to tie it yes. directly to the house? Yes. 
It will be a detached square arch. Okay. With the door, a, do, a rear door in the garage, which is about 15 feet from the, from the door that goes into the kitchen or the dining area. Okay. I, I have a question. One of the oppositions okay. here is, says they're uh, going to impede their view. I, I, how would I don't understand how it would impede anybody's view? Because the guy, the guy, <laughs> this one is clear up in the upper right hand corner there, and I don't know how it's going to impede his view. I don't either. Okay. Yeah. See the guy complaining is the upper one on the corner. The house directly behind our property is right. abandoned. Is abandoned. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what I mean. I don't know where he's coming from. I mean, we don't. You can walk around the whole property and, and see everything. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. And and there's trees all along that wall. Yeah, on the people. The uh, left of us, they do. They have huge trees right there, uh, a six foot wall, all the way down to the end of the property line. I mean, who's who's view are we going to be? That was my question. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure who that is. Huh. Yeah, I, I mean, got a six story home. Yeah. <laughs> But my, my concern is just for, for the general layout of that neighborhood. And I know there's been some other buildings that have come up uh, in the past in that neighborhood. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion about them um, it, because they are the big spacious lots. And I'm sure that's what attracted you to that to that, uh, to that that house in that neighborhood. And, um, it, you know, it, and 10 feet from the wall, it, it, well, 10 feet's a lot, but it really isn't. It, it's... Uh, yeah. And, and that's what makes that neighborhood so appealing to a lot of people, um, in my experience, uh, and, and knowing people that live um, out in that part of town. Yeah. You know, the height of the roof will be lower than the height of the house itself also. How, how tall are you proposing? It's a regular two-car garage. Just regular. Yeah, it won't it won't exceed the house. Was it probably twelve, maybe fourteen feet high? Maybe. It is to the uh I don't know. Probably it had to be pushing. <laughs> yeah, fourteen feet needs to be pushing. Yeah. To the top of the roof or are you talking about in inside? Yeah. yeah the yeah. Peak, the peak of the roof would probably not be over twelve foot. Yeah, that's small building, it's probably a twelve foot roof. So is it's lower than the house itself. I mean, the house has solar collectors on it. It's probably, the house is probably 14 foot to the peak. I, mean, I, I don't know. know. Yeah, we have, a, we have a slide up. We can see you in your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm trying to figure out how we're going to see somebody's view. So, you know, the, like the, 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 the people that built the house to the left of us, all we see is there's a garage, the top of the garage. Yeah, oh. <laughs> so, and the other guy, he's pretty far away from my place. Yeah. On the other side. So, I, I have a question on the 20 foot. Um, is that, what is the reason for that in the county as opposed to the city? I think it's only five foot and the county's 20. Uh, it generally corresponds to size of lots, and a lot of the lots in Cochise County are, are just bigger than than the city lots. Well, yeah, I mean, the roots of, of setbacks go, go back to, I guess, the Chicago fires and stuff, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> And there are no fire hydrants. <laughs> you can. No problem. You can. Yeah. Okay. Well, are you? Uh, do I hear any rebuttals? Uh, 
No. Anybody, anybody else on? No, anybody else? I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody else on the line. Oh. Yeah. Well, we will close this public hearing. Well, it's been your hand. Yeah. Well, we'll have commission discussion. Stay on the line because we can ask you questions. So, okay. if you have questions. Everything's been discussed. Okay. Do you want to give your... I'll, I'll wrap it up then. Um, so staff recommends approval of the variance as requested, and that concludes my presentation. Again, I'm available for questions, and I've included a sample motion on the slide for your consideration. Any discussion or make a recommendation, sample motion? I motion, make a motion that we accept the hearing. If you can read that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve docket VAR 23-06 Navajo Setback, located at 3513 East Navajo Street, Sierra Vista, Arizona, granting the variance as requested by the applicant, the factors in favor of approval constituting the finding of fact. I hear a second. I second. Okay. Um, any discussion? We're happy on this end. <laughs> okay. Well, we're talking to the board now. Any <laughs> questions, discussion, anything? Okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. So, motion carried unanimously. And Christine will be in touch with you. Yes, I will contact you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Okay. Really appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Ah, that's not old if you're only going to be 80. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> only if body tells me is that old. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my brain's not quite there yet, but it's getting close. Oh. <laughs> Had I not fallen off that ladder, I'd probably be in a lot better shape. <laughs> Good. Okay, well, thank okay. you. So we just, thank you. We just wait for our instructions after this now. Or? Yeah, I will give you, I'll give you a call tomorrow morning. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay. 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 This concludes all the the uh, public hearings, and I now call for the director's report. Okay. Uh, well, following the last uh, the last hearing, both the Staka and the Coleman cases, they've applied for building permits. Those were the two residential setbacks um, that were approved. Um. And as of today, we don't have any dockets scheduled for next month, but the deadline is this Friday. So there is potential for one variance. Um, again, for a setback, um, but in that case, it was non-residential, but they haven't actually applied for it yet. If, that's, if they do apply, then the August meeting would be August 30th. So, but we'll let you know. You know, I, I read these and I don't see where some of them are coming from. Like, you know, obstruct their view. Yeah, I, I mean, I will tell you, and, and this is just me personally, just in being out in that neighborhood and seeing it and stuff. The 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 appeal of that neighborhood is those huge lots, mm -hmm. those huge one acre lots, and your neighbor and property lines, and it's a very well taken care of neighborhood. And and I just hope that uh you know it, it, I think this one made sense uh, I think it was more for convenience than anything I think they could have used the roundabout yeah. direction and pulled up to the door yeah. and unloaded the groceries but I just hope we don't see a bunch of these come through for that neighborhood because I I do think it'll change the character of the neighborhood yeah I mean it is an established neighborhood and it hasn't changed too much over time it's just it's it's maintained itself I don't think there's that much turnover and I think that's part of it like yeah. it's just been kind of the same 
owners. And they're lots are narrow, too. No? They are they're narrow. Like the yeah. So that's the time. Yes. Yeah. Some, some of them are pretty narrow. I mean, mm-hmm. but it, they, even even a lot of those uh, a lot of those people over there, you'll see they don't even have fences up between their properties, but they don't have anything close to the property line mm-hmm. either. And then, you know, but you, you'll see it. You'll drive through that neighborhood. And I mean, mm-hmm. that's, it feels wide open. Very that's wide open. Yeah. You know, no, I, I don't, but I have a lot of friends who are over in that neighborhood. Yeah, I used to have a friend who lived over by there. They're nice, yeah. big lots. And yeah, I mean, they, but, whoever built the house didn't do much planning because all that whole back area is, is open that could be used. But, see, but when they were designing those houses, like a, in a remodel of that house or whatever, would probably solve that problem to, it, from today's standpoint. Yeah. But when they built those houses, like they have the carport there, and they could have enclosed that, but you still have the problem of walking through the whole house to get to the kitchen. Yeah. And it, it, where, where, you know, yeah, remodel of the house, right. you know, you put the, the kitchen by the garage, it makes sense, and, and uh, you know, your laundry room and stuff. But, uh, I, you know, my neighborhood, I mean, we have, I, I think they're pretty good-sized lots. I, you know, my house is on two-thirds of an acre, mm-hmm. you know, so 0. 0.66 of an acre, I mean, and it's, it's nice. It feels roomy, you yes. know. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I can't say I want my neighbor putting something right up to the property line. I'm in city limits, so they only have a five foot requirement yeah. of setback. So they do. Yeah, yeah, and right. That is part of being in the county. Bigger lots. Yeah. More yeah. bigger setbacks. Everything. It does, yeah, that neighborhood does feel big. It feels big. Yeah. We don't have that problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. A lot of acres. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, any other recent matters? Um, still have a bunch of cases. Let's see. Next month we have five dockets, one special use for um, solar farms. It's twenty five hundred acres. Again, solar farms. Mm-hmm. We're, 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 we're Wilcox, we're just south of the playa. So. Uh, Last month, we had a modification bringing one solar farm up to 4,200 acres. And this one... All 4,200 would be solar? Um, Well, not all of it, but... Majority. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of rain. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've driven to San Diego recently. We were there. (laughs) Yeah. We were there not not this weekend. The weekend before for a wedding and driving out to San Diego. And, you know, you leave Casa Grande and you're going on on I-8 there and... And they have uh, just miles of, of solar panels and then the big wind towers. And, man, it does take – the wind towers especially, they, they man, they, they're just ugly. Yeah. You know? know that. Well, we we have a few wind towers. Yeah. Have you seen the Cochise County ones? They're set back at least. Yeah. yeah. It's three lengths road. Yeah. yeah. Where? You pretty much – you have to go down three lengths, which is – Well, road. Airport road. And oh, okay. Oh, okay. There's, there's wind – Windmills back there and and solar, big solar area. Mm-hmm. Back See, so long. And, and, and the question I've always like, had with those with those solar panels, and, and I, I question this, and I'm sure there's an answer out there somewhere for it. Is is you have to think with because uh, they're all typically black, and, and they draw in all that energy, all that heat, and they don't reflect the way the ground would naturally reflect heat. So they're holding heat, yeah. and, and and at some point at, at, at at what point is too many too many? I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the answer to the question, but I don't, I don't think they're bringing that up either. Yeah, I want that. Uh, <laughs> but but, uh, but I, I think it's a valid question. When you, yes. have, when you have, well, 4,200 acres of yeah. uh, black solar panels drawing in all that energy from the sun, and they're not reflecting it, it's got to be hotter than hell. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, well, I, just, I mean, yeah, they do say it replaces, there's a couple coal plants that have been retired recently, and these are intended to help replace that. And we do put modifications in uh, requiring them to space them out a certain distance, basically from like a ray to a ray, it's like 23 feet. So greater distances, and the other concern is um, potential confusion by birds, you know, thinking these are, are going to be water because these are water birds. Yeah. yeah, so we do require they space them out so there's less lake effect confusion. With, with well, the, the feet you're looking at, and just about to the Norway there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So, I mean, there's, so they can still see, and they're required to keep perennial vegetation underneath. So the idea is there's panel, eventually, like green, mm -hmm. and then panel. So it doesn't look just like a black lake. Well, and to the green absorbs some of the heat. Yes. Yeah. Which is, which is better for the panels themselves, because they can get yeah. too mm -hmm. hot, too. Yeah. 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 That's, I, yeah, I, I, I just remember seeing an article one time, and it was somewhere, I think, in Africa, and they had a huge, you know, thousands and thousands of acres of uh, of these panels set up, and it did alter the, the, the ambient air temperature around them because it did just so much energy, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and we have a modification of um, up near Ramsey Canyon where they're doing guest lodging they have right right near Ramsey Canyon they want to put in an additional cabin and two RV spaces and then we have some down zonings like three down zonings and that seems like the, the whole uh, I think we talked about it last time the area on Mosin and Ramsey or Mosin and Hereford Road that, that's become a little contentious. Yes, so that was denied by yeah. the Board of Supervisors it yesterday. It was denied. Yes. The well, planning... it, it, they're contending, I, uh, that there's a big ranch, just yeah. if you come to stop sign, it's... Uh, yeah, they wanted to resolve that to, to allow for commercial. Yeah. yeah. That The ranch? Yeah, yeah. He must have sold it, Algoric. Yeah. Well, Gorex, they had 4,000 acres. No, this was just a 13-acre parcel on the northeast side of Mosin and Hereford Road. So th there is that 1,300, and there's an 800-acre parcel. Those are still there. But this this was just right at the intersection, northeast side, 13 acres. I think people were afraid they were going to put up a dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, that but was... see, that, that wouldn't be on Oboric's property, Northeast. No. 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 Yeah. There's only one Oboric left, so... But that was tonight, huh? It was tonight. Huh? Anything yeah. else? Any more questions? No. Do you want to... <laughs> I do well, want to adjourn the meeting. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.